Hello, my precious friends. I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It is our fifth lesson on the first topic of Form 4, which is called Thin Lenses. As usual, let me commence by giving the quote of the day, which states that life will never get easier. It's you to get stronger. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are looking at examples involving graphical analysis of the lens formula. So our first example reads that in an experiment we determine the focal length of a converging lens using the lens formula method, the following graph was used. So use it to determine the focal length of the lens that was used. So this is a graph of 1 over V against 1 over U, of course in per centimeters. Then for any value that you obtain along the 1 over V axis, you must multiply times 10 power negative 2, same case 2 all the values that you obtain along the 1 over u axis. So from the mirror formula, we we'll simply, we said from our previous class that the intercepts will actually give us the focal length. So at the 1 over u intercept along this particular point, the point whereby the graph cuts the 1 over u axis, that is what we are calling the 1 over u intercept. So along the horizontal axis, the values of y will always be equal to 0. So similarly, along the 1 over u uh, axis, all the values of 1 over v will always be equal to 0 because if you read the value of 1 over v at this particular point is actually equal to 0. So at the 1 over u intercept, the values of 1 over v will always be equal to 0. Hence, the, for, the lens formula which was 1 over f is equal to 1 over u plus 1 over v will simply become because 1 over v will always be equal to 0 along the 1 over u um, axis, it simply means that I'll substitute 1 over v being equal to 0 in this particular formula. So this uh, the lens formula would remain as 1 over f is equals to 1 over u plus 0, which is just 1 over f is equals to 1 over u. But from our graph, the value, the 1 over u intercept, that is the point whereby our graph cuts the 1 over u axis, it is cutting it at point 4. Therefore, 1 over f, which is equals to 1 over u, is equals to the point 4. But for any value that you obtain along the 1 over u axis, you must multiply it times 10 power negative 2, and it will always be in Per centimeters. Therefore, uh, 1 over f is equals 1 over u, which is equals to 4 times 10 power negative 2, of course, per centimeters. So this one simply means that 1 over f will be equal to 4 times 10 power negative 2, because remember the aim is to find the focal length. The aim is not to find 1 over u, the aim is to find the value of f. Therefore, 1 over f is equals to 4 times 10 power negative 2. So if I take reciprocals on both sides, the reciprocal of 1 over f is just f over 1, which is just f. The reciprocal of 4 times 10 power negative 2 will be 1 over 4 times 10 power negative 2, of course, in per centimeters. So if you compute 1 divided by 4 times 10 power negative 2 per centimeters, you'll simply obtain 25 centimeters. So that is the focal length using the 1 over u axis. So because the graph is cutting both axes, we can also find the focal length using the 1 over v axis that is axis. So at the 1 over v intercept, so at the point whereby this particular graph cuts the 1 over v intercept, all the values of 1 over u will actually be equal to 0. Same thing to what you are saying in mathematics that all the values of x along the y-axis will be equal to 0. So the same thing. So the y-axis is having 1 over v. So all the values of 1 over u along the 1 over v axis will always be equal to 0. So along this particular line, the values of 1 over u, you can see, will always be equal to 0. So at 1 over v intercept, at this particular point here, 1 over u will always be equal to 0. Hence, the lens formula will become 1 over f is equal to 0 plus 1 over v because 1 over u is actually 0. So this will become 1 over f is equal to 1 over v. But along the 1 over v intercept, that is at this particular point, it is cutting the, uh, the 1 over v intercept at point at 3.5. Five. Then any value you have to multiply times 10 power negative 2. Therefore, 1 over f is equal to 1 over v, which is equal to 3.5 times 10 power negative 2. So 3.5 because the graph is cutting the 1 over v intercept at 0.3.5, then times 10 power negative 2, of course, per centimeter. Um, so this one simply means 1 over f will be equal to 3.5 times 10 power negative 2 per centimeters. If I take reciprocals on both sides, I'll have... The reciprocal of 1 over f is just f over 1, which is just f. Then the reciprocal of 3.5 times 10 power negative 2 will just be 1 over 3.5 times 10 power negative 2. So if you compute this, you'll find your focal length as 28.57 centimeters, of course, correct to four significant figures. Therefore, because for this particular graph, it is possible to find the value of 
uh, the focal length using the 1 over u axis and the value of focal length using the 1 over v axis. To find the focal length, you simply find the average focal length for the two values. Therefore, the average focal length will just be the focal length for the first case, which was 25 centimeters, plus the focal length for the second case, which is 28.57 centimeters. Then, of course, because there are two, you divide by two so that you find the average focal length. So 25 plus 28.57, you just obtain 53.57. Then divided by 2, you'll obtain 26.785 centimeters as your average focal length. So this is the uh, general or the total focal length of the length that was used. However, if you are given a graph that is only cutting, for example, one of the axes, you just use the value for that particular axis. But if the line is cutting both axes, you find the focal length using the first axis, then the second axis, then you divide by two. But if the graph was only cutting maybe the one over U axis and not cutting the one over V axis even after uh, extrapolation, then in that case, you'll just take 25 centimeters as your answer. Similarly, if the graph was just cutting the one over V axis alone without maybe cutting the one over U axis, you could have just used the value of focal length obtained uh, for 1 over v as your final answer but because this particular graph after extrapolating it it can cut both axes so you just find the the average focal length uh, using the 1 over u intercept and the 1 over v intercept the second question reads that in an experiment the following graph was obtained used it to determine the focal length of the lens used so this is a graph of u plus v that is the object distance plus image distance uh, against the product of image distance times the, um, that is the object uh, distance. So from our previous class, we did analyze this particular graph. So you can just check from our previous class. We said that um, if uh, you play around with the mirror formula, that is 1 over f is equals 1 over u plus 1 over v. So you can play around with this particular mirror formula until you get u plus v being equal to 1 over f uh, multiplied by u v. Just refer from our previous class we have derived this particular relationship. So I'm using this relationship because it is already rhyming with my graph. So you can see along the y-axis, I have u plus v. So u plus v is rhyming with my y-axis. Then the x-axis, which is uv, is again rhyming with my x-axis. So you simply play around with the mirror formula until it disintegrates into the equation of a straight line because this is a straight line. Therefore, on equating, we can clearly see that um, the gradient, which is m, will correspond to the reciprocal of the focal length. Therefore, the focal length will simply be equal to 1 over the gradient. So our first task is to find the gradient of that particular graph. So I'll just pick two points. For example, I'm picking this particular point, which is 15, 3, and this other point, which is 5, 1. So the gradient will be change in y over change in x, but what is on our um, y is u plus v. Therefore, gradient will be change in u plus v against a change in x what is on our x axis is u v so again it's change in u v of course this one is in centimeter squared the upper value is in centimeters so change in u uh, plus v so that is the change of values in the y axis would just be three minus one so three minus one then the change of values in the horizontal axis which is u v will just be 15 minus five just the same way that you find gradient in mathematics so 15 minus five of course in centimeter um squared so of course centimeter will cancel the centimeter squared you just remain with centimeter on uh the denominator so of course three minus one you'll obtain two 15 minus uh, five you'll obtain 10 so five over 10 you just obtain 0 0.2 then when centimeters goes to the numerator courtesy of the loss of indices it will just be a negative one so uh the gradient is equals to 0 0.2 uh centim per centimeters then from this relationship, we saw that the focal length will be equal to the reciprocal of the gradient. Therefore, focal length is the reciprocal of the gradient, which is equal to 1 over the gradient is 0 0.2 per centimeters, which will give us 5 centimeters. So that is the focal length of the length that was used. Next, we look at our third example, which is that in an experiment to determine the focal length of a converging length, the following graph was obtained. So this is our graph use the graph to determine the focal length of the lens that was used. Of course, from our previous class, we did look at the graphical analysis of the graph of uh, uh, magnification m against the image distance v. So from the mirror formula, 1 over f is equals 1 over u plus 1 over v, 
So we are simply trying to make this particular equation align with the equation of a straight line graph. So I'll start by multiplying uh, each and every term by V so that I introduce the magnification in the formula. So times V times V times V. So of course V multiplied by 1 over F, you just obtain V over F. Then 1 over U multiplied by V, you just obtain V over U. Then um, 1 over V multiplied by V, you just obtain V over V, which will disintegrate into V over F is equals to V over U is simply magnification. Remember object dis image distance over object distance will give you magnification. Huh? So this will be V over F is equals magnification. Then V divided by V, you just obtain 1. So if I make M the subject, I'll have M being equal to V over F minus 1. Therefore, this equation can be written as M is equals to 1 over F multiplied by V, then minus 1. So you can see that it is clearly aligning with the equation of a straight line graph. That is Y is equals to MX then plus C. Of course, where M corresponds to the gradient. Therefore, you can clearly see that M is equals to 1 over F. So they are corresponding. So 1 over F is equals to M. And remember, M is usually the gradient of that particular graph. So this one is simply telling us that if we want to find the focal length, we must first of all find the value of the gradient. So let's find the gradient of the given graph. So of course, gradient is changing y over change in x. What is on our y-axis is the magnification m. So that will be change in magnification m over change in what is on our x-axis is v. That is the image distance v. So I'm going to use this particular point here. That is point 10, 0 and the point, uh, the point 0, uh, negative 1. So it, the change in y will simply be um, 0. Remember the value of y here is actually 0. So the change in y will simply be 0 minus minus 1.5. So this is the value of y at this particular point. So this is point 10, 0. Then this is uh, the point uh, 0, negative 1. Therefore change in y will just be uh, 0 minus minus 1. So 0 minus minus 1 then change in x will just be 10 minus 0. So 10 minus 0. So 0 minus minus 1.0, you've just obtained um, 0 0.1. So if you take, this will, will actually be, uh, will remain as positive 1, then divided by 10, it will just give you 0 0.1, then of course in per centimeters. So um, because we said that the reciprocal of the focal length will be equal to the gradient, and we have found the gradient as 0 0.1, it follows that 1 over f will be equal to the gradient, and the gradient is 0 0.1. So 1 over focal length is equal to 0 0.1, which is the gradient. So f, I'll simply take reciprocal on both sides. So the reciprocal of 1 over f is just f over 1, which is f. Then the reciprocal of 0 0.1 will just be 1 over 0 0.1 per centimeter. So f will be equal to 1 divided by 0 0.1 per centimeter. It will just give us 10 centimeters. Therefore, that is the focal length of the lens that was used. Therefore, the focal length is equal to 10 centimeters. We can convert it to meters, which will be 10 centimeters, divided by 100 centimeters times 1 meter, which will give us 0 0.1 meters. So that is the focal length. Then part B, they wanted us to find the power of the lens used. We said also from our previous class that the power of the length will be equal to the reciprocal of the focal length when that focal length is expressed in meters. So because the focal length is 0 0.1, uh, the power of the length will be 1 divided by the focal length, which is 0 0.1 meters, which will give us 10 meter power negative 1 on, or 10 per meter, which is simply equal to 10 uh, dietaries or which can also be abbreviated as 10 D. So that is the power of the length that was used in that particular case. Lastly, I have an exercise that I recommend you should try at your own free time to get the understanding of the examples that you have just done. Of course, if you have any challenges in handling any of the questions, feel free to drop a comment specifying the question that you need help in. And as usual, I'm always here to try and help where possible. So we've come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that life will never get easier. It's you to get stronger. So the quote is warning us against expecting life to be smooth. Remember that real life comprises of ups and downs. Therefore, we must be psychologically ready to deal with the downs of life because that is the only way we can grow. Remember, there are only difficult moments or challenging moments that can help you to grow your mental strength because you will learn how to solve problems uh, next time. And remember that the most successful people are the ones who are 
problem solvers. Therefore, the larger the problem you solve, the more successful you become. And lastly, recall that strength does not come from the things you can do. Rather, strength comes from overcoming the things you thought were impossible. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you'll get notified. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you very much.